Hello everyone and welcome back to the Level Up English podcast. This is one of my favorite times of year because we are talking about kind of end of year reflections and plans for the year ahead. I do one of these episodes every year, something a little bit similar, and I really do mean it when I say it's my favorite time of year. I always take some time off when it comes to the end of December, and I think it's a really good time whether you can take time off or not. It's a good time to reflect, uh, think about how things have been going, plan for the year ahead. So I bring these reflections uh, publicly on the podcast so you can listen along. Maybe there will be some interesting vocabulary that naturally comes up as I'm talking. But the main idea, the main purpose of me talking about this stuff is to get you thinking about it as well. Because I know a lot of people may say, well, New Year's resolutions, that means New Year's goals, these resolutions, they're not useful. We don't really need to think about them. In fact, you can make a plan any time of year. It doesn't have to be at the New Year. And of course, this is true. It doesn't have to be January 1st to start going to the gym. You can start going anytime. I am not the kind of person to make goals where I start on January 1st. I don't think that's necessarily the best thing to do. However, I think it's really important to take some time to reflect on the past and plan for the future. You may be the kind of person who does this all the time anyway. If so, you're not like me. I don't do that naturally, so I have to make some time to plan. And I do think that the end of the calendar year is a a nice natural point to do that. Especially if you're in a country like the UK, where we celebrate Christmas, because a lot of people have some time off, and they're kind of thinking about the year ahead. It's quite a natural time to do that. So today, in this episode, we'll be talking about some... Well, I will be talking about some of my successes this year, and I'll be talking about some of my struggles this year as well. So we've got the good and the bad, and then of course I'm going to encourage you to consider what these would be for you as well. Maybe just hearing about my own experiences will help jog your memory. To jog your memory means to help encourage your brain to remember things, to help your brain spin, move a bit faster. So I'll be talking about that kind of stuff on the the year we have just had, which is 2023. If you are listening to this in the future, then I think it's still going to be useful. You don't have to be listening uh, right now. I will then move on to talk about the future. I'll be talking about my plans for the next year, 2024. And I always kind of do these episodes slightly differently each year to make it interesting. And also I update The way that I reflect and the way that I plan changes a little bit each year. So we've got some categories to talk about and I'm going to ask you what yours are as well. So I hope you're interested in that. I hope you're looking forward to it. If you think it might be useful for you, you could consider becoming a member to Level Up English. Perhaps you can even give it as a gift, a Christmas present gift to someone. I don't know if that would be weird, but if you or someone you know is looking to improve your English and you want to improve with these podcasts, you want to join group classes, you want other courses for IELTS practice, grammar practice, writing practice, uh, pronunciation practice, almost anything you can think of, then you could perhaps become a member at Level Up English School. So just go to levelupenglish.school click on the members button at the top of the page or there is a link in your podcast app. You can have a look, see what it's like, see if it's good for you and consider joining. You don't have to but if you're not sure you could also join our free email community. I really want to respect everyone's inboxes because there's nothing I hate more than getting junk emails. I really hate that So for that reason, I try to make all of my emails useful and beneficial. So I send only two emails a month. Each email contains a free mini lesson. 
Usually we're learning some grammar or some vocabulary through a little story or motivational text. It's also a great place to get updates and reminders about what I'm working on at the moment and what might help you. If you do sign up on the email community, you'll also get five free lessons from Level Up English. So if you're thinking about joining, but you're really not sure, then this is a good option for you because you can see a couple lesson examples, study them, have a look at them, and that will give you an idea of what the course is like. Once again, if you want to join the email community for free, the link is in your podcast app as well, in the description somewhere on your phone. But anyway, let's get into the topic today. It kind of feels weird to be talking about this now because this is my first December spent in Thailand, spent in my new house in Thailand. And normally at this time it's cold. I think in the UK there's some snow at the moment. However, here in Bangkok, it's hot, it's sunny. If you're watching the video version on YouTube, you can see there's sunlight shining on me, almost blinding my eyes. So it's a very weird kind of Christmas feeling. It doesn't feel like December, but uh, I guess that's something I have to get used to. But anyway, so every year I write a document. I write up a few pages about my goals and plans for the year. It may sound a bit nerdy or a bit boring, but I personally really enjoy it. I think it's really fun and I find it quite beneficial. To be totally transparent, totally honest with you, I almost never look at my goals document throughout the year. I, I write it at the beginning and I kind of forget about it for the most part. But even though I don't check, I think the process of writing things down stays with me and it does shape my year and uh, how things are going. And I also think it's just nice to think about the year you've had and do some writing because otherwise it's really, really easy to let life pass you by. If you're not kind of reflecting on how life is going, I think it can just go by really quickly. And then you go, wow, I'm already 30, I'm already 40 years old or whatever age, what happened? I just think taking a, taking a moment to just reflect allows you to reposition yourself if you think that's necessary. So let's get into the first topic, which is successes this year. Let's start on the positives. Obviously, I'm going to be talking about myself, perhaps quite selfishly, but I will encourage you to think about yourself as well. So for me, one success that I think I've had is how I would summarize as focusing more on living a good life. That may sound quite vague, that's not very specific, but let me tell you a quote, a story by, I think the Dalai Lama that I found uh, recently. So this is talking about a person who sacrifices their health to make money. That person then sacrifices the money to recuperate their health. Recuperate means get back, bring the health back up to a good level, right? So just once again, someone sacrifices health to get money, then they sacrifice their money to become healthy again. Then that person is so anxious about the future that they do not enjoy the present. The result being that this person does not live in the present or the future. They live as if they are never going to die and then dies having never really lived. I hope that made sense. I'm also going to write this on the blog post. If you go to levelupenglish.school slash podcast 252, you'll read it there and then maybe you can think uh, about it in more detail. But basically, this is about not giving up your happiness to do something that you think will get you happy in the future. So practically, here's a practical example. You could spend all of your time working now, 10 hours a day, really, really hard. You never have any time off because you want to make money because you think that money will make you happy in the future. But if it were possible, what if you could just work less hours, you work fewer hours, not work so hard, and you have a lot more happiness now? 
And one benefit of that is you will be in the present more and you won't always be living for the future, a future that may never come. So that's my reasoning. I hope that makes sense. It's a little bit confusing perhaps. But basically one of my successes this year is I have had this in mind and I've shifted my priorities towards health and happiness, uh, at least more than before. So for example, if something makes me money, but it causes me lots of stress and problems, I would like to be willing to let it go. Right? It's not saying give up everything that is stressful, but at least hold it loosely. Don't hold on so tightly to something. So this year I have put a lot more time into my hobbies, uh, into exercise, uh, spending time outside in nature, going for walks, anything like that. And especially having a job where you can work as many hours as you want, you really have to tell yourself to stop and take some time off. You kind of have to admit that I could be making more money, but I'm going to sacrifice that money to go for a walk, right? So think about what that could be for you, perhaps. If you are working really hard, think about why are you working so hard? Are you working hard so you can be happy in the future? Well, why not just be happy right now? That's basically what I've been thinking of anyway. So I have put more time into what I enjoy this year and less worrying about money. And that has benefited me a lot. Next one, going back to work a little bit, going back to work kind of stuff. Level Up English is growing, so a big success for me is expanding what I do at Level Up English and kind of changing my words rather than say what I do, what we do, because now we have teachers, we have other people working uh, with Level Up English uh, on Saturday. We've had the amazing help of teacher Charlotte. Uh, she's been a great help. She's an amazing teacher and I've really enjoyed working with her. So she's been helping out with the group classes. We've also had teacher Emma, who has helped with a few classes recently. So that's been a, a huge success for me. I'm really glad I, I found both of these guys and, and they'd be willing, uh, they were willing to help out. That's been really great. Uh, I've also changed quite a lot of the structure on the website. I've worked really hard on uh, updating courses, uh, adding new content and trying to make the content more chronological, which means make it in order. So new members should be able to join, start from lesson one and work lesson two, three, four, work their way up to a higher level. I'm still working on that, but I'm really proud with uh, what I have done so far. And it seems like other people are enjoying that as well. I also added a new membership level. So now you have the option. If you want to join the group classes, you can. Or if you want to save some money without group classes, that is also an option. So I think that's been quite helpful for everyone. It's quite a nice change. So yeah, very busy year on Level Up English, but that has been a success for me. Another one which might sound a bit strange, it might not sound like a success, but one was that I stopped making regular YouTube videos. Uh, I did talk about this in the past. If you're not sure what I mean, I have two YouTube channels. One of them, it was actually kind of close to 100,000 subscribers, which is like a big milestone, a big level uh, in the YouTube world. And despite that kind of growing subscriber count, I decided to stop. And I'm really glad I did stop. It feels like a long time ago, but I think it was within this year. It was a really difficult decision because I have been, well, I had been, past perfect tense, I had been uploading on a weekly basis for a few years and I put a lot of work into that. But in the end, I decided to give it a break. Uh, I, ne I never said I'm going to stop forever, just an experiment. I gave it a break and I put more attention into the podcast. So that's when I started uploading regularly on the podcast YouTube channel. We have over 20,000 subscribers now, and it turned out to be a really good decision. Honestly, I enjoy the podcast a lot more. Uh, I, do, I did enjoy the YouTube videos, but I found it was also more stressful, like thinking of ideas, 
Uh, I used to usually go outside and film videos, which was quite challenging. So doing or making this change gave me a lot more time and hopefully, I really, really hope this is the case, but hopefully you can see the the uh, podcast episodes have improved in quality. I hope you can see that because I have been putting more work into them. And once I stopped doing the videos on my main channel, I kind of realized the, the pressure that I was putting on myself. So maybe this is a good reminder for you that sometimes you don't realize how much pressure you are under until you take a step back or you take a break. So maybe that's something you can take away. If you can, take one week off, give it, have a break from everything and then see how you feel. You know, maybe you realize something really isn't working in your life. Two more things now, two more things. One is I started an amazing morning routine. <laughs> I don't think everyone needs to have a morning routine, but for me, this has been really great. Uh, it's quite a long routine, but once again, this goes back to what I said before about focusing more on what I enjoy and less about, you know, working hard, making money, doing the efficient thing, I suppose. So really my routine now kind of goes from meditation to a morning walk to uh, studying languages in a cafe, getting some sunlight, all that kind of like really healthy stuff for me. And also a big one is no YouTube in the morning, no distractions. A big problem for me last year and earlier in the year was I would wake up and I would watch YouTube videos while having breakfast. And I just found it wasn't a great way to start my day. I didn't really enjoy it. I guess because I had a nagging feeling. It was like pulling on me, nagging on me that I should be doing something different. And for me, I've made this change and I feel much more productive. And when I do watch some YouTube later in the day, I enjoy it much more because it's more of a special treat to myself. So that's been a great thing. Just adding that routine into my life. I think you have to keep changing. If you want to have some kind of morning or evening routine, keep tweaking and changing things until you find something that works for you. My final success is my travel success. I guess this is a success because uh, it was my goal for last year. So on my bucket list goals, I wanted to go to China, which I did. I had a really good time in China. Uh, I also planned to go to Europe and Japan. I kind of failed that. I didn't do that this year. However, I think I can forgive myself because I went to Thailand. I moved to Thailand, which is a huge change. And I also went to Malaysia as well. So I still went to a few countries. I'm very lucky for that. Uh, so I cannot complain. Uh, that was a big success for me is seeing some new places and opening my mind a little bit. Okay, now let's go to the struggles I have had. We'll do this for a few minutes, then we'll move on to what I think is the most important part at the end, which are the plans for next year. So struggles I've had. One big struggle I've had is maintaining healthy habits. Despite what I just said about my routine, one example is waking up early. I've had a lot of trouble waking up early. And for me, that's quite a healthy thing, having that regular early morning wake up time. I have got much, much better now that I have an exciting routine in the morning to wake up to. But that was a real challenge for me, especially uh, during the first half of the year, just waking up early and not sleeping for half of the morning. And that was tough for me. But there's a really good phrase that I read that I actually wrote down in my notes because I think it's a great reminder and a great motivator. So this is somewhere in the future, your older self is watching you through memories. Whether it's with regret or nostalgia depends on what you do now. Isn't that amazing? So let's break that down. Let's make it simple. Somewhere in the future, your older self is watching you through memories. So just like right now, you can think about your younger self uh, in your memories, in your mind. Your future self is thinking about you today in their memories. And it might be with regret. So regret is going to be, oh, why did I do that? Oh, that was such a stupid thing I did. 
and that could be a really big thing, like a huge mistake you made, or it could just be something simple like, you know, not waking up early. That's been a really big motivator for me is trying to give future Michael some good memories. If I stay up really late, I don't go to bed until midnight and then I wake up late. The next day, I will be so angry at past Michael. Oh, why were you so stupid? Why did you sleep so late? It didn't benefit anyone. Why did you do that? So in that case, I'm remembering with regret. Nostalgia is a noun. Adjective is nostalgic. If you feel nostalgia or nostalgic, you look back on the past with happy, fond memories. You know, you kind of think about a past memory and then you smile. Ah, like, oh, that was a good memory. Oh, really nice. So is there something that you're doing now that's going to give future you some nostalgic memories? That's going to make you a lot happier in the future, I think. Another phrase that's a really nice reminder, much shorter, is what would you tomorrow want you today to do? What would you tomorrow want you today to do? Uh, if you're not sure, if you kind of got two choices, you're not sure what choice to make, just ask yourself that question. Uh, that's what I've been doing. It's been helping a lot on maintaining healthy habits. But anyway, let me go to another struggle. And I think this has been more evident since coming to Thailand. And this is being too concerned with what other people think. I feel like this is a big problem in another country where you feel like an outsider. You feel like people are all watching you. So I definitely felt that way when I go to a new place. I think, oh, everyone's looking at me. Everyone's judging me. But even though I may be the only foreigner in a certain area, I think people don't really care as much as I think they do. Right? I think we all know that deep down. But in the moment, it's easy to forget that and think that everyone really cares about us. We're, we're, you know, we're so important. We're so whatever like that. And it's just not the case. That was a struggle this year is kind of getting anxious about appearing a certain way. Whereas I think I have to remind myself that people are generally quite self-absorbed. Self-absorbed means focused on themselves. They're not focused on other things. You know, when someone's walking in public, you might think, oh, they're judging me. But they're probably thinking, how do I look? Do I look okay? Am I walking weirdly? Yeah. They're probably thinking about themselves. Nine times out of ten, right? I'm going to throw at you another quote here because I love quotes and there's lots of good ones to help us talk about this topic. So this is this. Tension is who you think you should be. Relaxation is who you are. So tension is the opposite of relaxation. Tension is when you're using your muscles and your energy to try to do something. So you might be thinking, I should be this kind of person. And you're really trying hard to be that way. But if you just relax and take it easy, you will find your true self. I really like that idea. So tension is who you think you should be. Relaxation is who you are. So maybe my goal for the coming year will be to relax a bit more and try to be myself as a result. I think that's probably not the best phrase, try to be myself, but just relax and I will be myself. That's a better way. <laughs> Let's do a couple more now. One is a uh, physical one. I fractured my wrist. This was a big, what, how could I say, like a big blow to my confidence, a big uh, disappointing end to my year. It happened in October, I believe. But of course, it takes a couple months to heal. So by the way, fracture is not break. Fracture is like a crack. So I didn't break my wrist. I fractured. I cracked my the bone in my wrist. So it's not so serious, but it was still annoying. I, I fell off my skateboard. It was really embarrassing. And it wasn't so painful, honestly, but it swelled up and got really big and I had to go to hospital. And I'm sure many people have this as they get older, right? But it made me realize how easy it would be to cause long lasting damage to myself. Long lasting, it's a compound adjective that just means damage that lasts a long time, obviously. So 
I think this is something that a lot of people need to learn at some point. I've been very lucky and I haven't really had a serious injury before, but it kind of made me realize I, I fell and I fractured my wrist. I'm not sure if that will be with me forever. Like, you know, when it's cold, will I feel that? I don't know. I've never broken a bone before. But it did make me think, you know, what if it had been more serious? What if I'd really broken something and I really couldn't use this arm the same as before? That would stop me so much from doing the hobbies I like, like climbing and other stuff like that. So I think from now on, I will weigh up the activity with the potential risk. I also have to think, is it worth potentially missing out on other activities for months? Like if I have another accident, I cannot go to the gym, I cannot go swimming, I cannot do many activities for many months. So this year was quite tough for me for that reason, uh, not being able to exercise as I wanted. So it's not saying never take a risk, but at least be more conscious of the risks. I think that's a good uh, lesson for me there. I guess the final uh, struggle that I will mention is using screens in the bedroom. This is getting really uh, honest, really open now. I have had a goal for a long time. Well, again, I can use past perfect because that implies it's no longer true. I had had a goal for a long time to not use any screens in the bedroom. So laptops, phones, keep them out of the bedroom because uh, it's healthier, it's good for your sleep and it's good for your eyes. Many, many benefits for that. I failed this year. You know, we have quite a nice living room, We've got comfortable sofas and nice place to relax. But I just decided that I just enjoy it too much, right? <laughs> There's nothing I enjoy more than, you know, having a shower, getting into bed and maybe watching something on my laptop. You know, it's not ideal for sleep. It's not the best thing to do, but I just really like it. And I kind of decided that my life cannot be perfect. We are not robots. We all do some things that are not ideal. You know, we, we might eat some uh, chocolate cake. We might do whatever. Uh, it's not a perfect way to live. But I just kind of decided I like to do it and I'm going to make peace with that. So that was my struggle. But then I decided it's fine. <laughs> I wonder if you've got anything the same. I wonder if there's something that you've really been struggling with, you've been fighting against, but you may have to think about, is it worth it? Do you actually really enjoy it, even though it's not super healthy for you? I'm not saying you should give up everything like that, but have a think about it. If you're doing nine things out of 10 that are healthy, maybe one little thing that isn't so good is not a big problem. I guess the idea here is don't be too hard on yourself. I think that's a great reminder. Okay, well, I've been rambling for a long time. I knew I would because I love this topic. Let's get into now uh, plans and ideas about the coming year. Coming year means the year that will come soon. So in this case, 2024. Really sounds like we're in the future now, doesn't it? I want to give one initial thought. I wrote down here in my notes, based on what I just spoke about with, with my wrist problem. Uh, one thing I learned from that experience was being flexible uh, when plans don't work out. So I think there's many examples of this. You know, I fractured my wrist and I couldn't uh, go climbing. I couldn't go to the gym. I couldn't go swimming. I had to change my routine. And it was tough, but of course I had no other choice. I had to be flexible. Uh, I'm sure a lot of us learned this with COVID. When the pandemic uh, happened, we had to be flexible. And I'm sure none of us planned that there would be a pandemic. So there's a great quote here, another quote, I wonder how many I'm giving today, which is, life is what happens when we're busy making other plans. So in other words, we can plan and plan and plan, we can make the perfect plan for life, but life doesn't really care about our plans. We have to be flexible when things inevitably don't go as planned. Inevitably means definitely. It will definitely happen at some point. It is destined to happen. If something is inevitable, it is unavoidable, in other words. So changes to our plans are inevitable. 
we cannot avoid that happening. So we need to practice being flexible and accepting when what we want to happen doesn't happen. That was my first thought I wanted to share. Anyway, this year I have four types of goals I want to talk about briefly as similar to last year. We've got self-development goals, uh, work or study goals, and bucket list goals. Bucket list goals are kind of like physical things like travel and that kind of stuff. I think mine are all about travel, honestly. And the final one is a bit different, and this is taking something away from your life. So four categories today to talk about, and I'm going to talk about just one or two in each one. I won't take too long here. But self-development, first of all, uh, for the next year, regarding self-improvement, development, I want to hit the gym a bit more. To hit the gym just means to go to the gym. Uh, this was my goal for this year, but my injury uh, put a spanner in the works. That's a good expression there. To put a spanner in the works means to kind of cause a problem to stop something from happening or at least to make something more difficult. So the problem, injury, uh, put a spanner in the works. Think about how you could use that expression for yourself. Maybe write it down, it could be helpful. So I wanna go to the gym, I wanna build up some more muscle and wanna, I wanna focus also on more healthy eating. Coming to Thailand when uh, takeaway is so cheap, I really wanna focus more on cooking myself well, not cooking myself, but cooking for myself, uh, cooking my own food. And yeah, I think that's a good goal to have. Regarding Thailand, I would like to try to order more things in Thai. I'm, pr I'm pretty good at that. I think I'm better than a lot of people I meet, a lot of expats I meet here who only use English. But I find I do get lazy. I have to kind of keep my curiosity and keep my interest in Thai. Uh, otherwise, I, I just switch to English because I know, you know, in a cafe, they, they probably speak English. But I, I want to kind of keep practicing Thai and, and keep improving there a little bit. Another goal regarding languages is I want to make more small talk in Chinese and Japanese. There are a lot of people from those countries in Bangkok. And sometimes there are occasions where, like, there's a perfect opportunity for me to say something. Uh, even if it's just, oh, good morning or something very small. I, I usually never say anything because I don't want to be rude, I don't want to be weird. But again, this goes back to the previous thing that people just don't really care. Um, if I say good morning, they might ignore me, no big deal. Or they might kind of want to talk to me more and then that's a great opportunity to make a friend and, and also get some language practice, right? Because why are we learning a language if not to practice with others at the end of the day? So I want to be a bit more confident about my uh, language learning small talk. And another quite personal goal is I want to be content with what I have. Uh, I'm really trying to practice this now. So I've got uh, t-shirts that have kind of rips in them. It's not really obvious, but they look a bit scruffy. My shoes have holes in them <laughs> and you know I will replace them soon or fix them soon, but I'm not too worried about it. I'm trying to be content with what I have and not always thinking I need to have the perfect item. I don't need the perfect microphone or the perfect phone. If it's okay, it works for me, that's fine. So I want to have that mindset this year. How about you? Let me know what your self-development goals will be for this year. Next category is work or study goals. I'm going to talk about work for me because I'm not really studying at the moment. So work is kind of about level up English and podcasting. I would like to find another teacher to help with level up English classes. This would be really beneficial and it would also help out me and the current teachers because if we want a holiday, we want, or if we get sick, it's nice to have someone who can help out, especially for maybe night classes because of my time zone. Uh, I cannot teach in the evening because for me it will be like one o'clock in the morning. Uh, in Europe it will be the evening. So I'd love to find another teacher. It's quite hard to find someone willing to help. But 
maybe if you know someone, if you know a teacher who might be interested, uh, maybe you have your own teacher who could uh, help out uh, every now and then, let me know or maybe tell them about me. Uh, I'd love to find some teachers who could help with the classes. So that, that would be nice. Kind of leading on from that, I would like to have uh, perhaps four classes per week by the end of 2024. Let's see if that happens. I'm very open to go in different directions, just seeing what works well. But at the moment, I think four classes would be great. Let's say Friday, Saturday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I don't know. But anyway, the goal there is to have a class for everyone. So anyone who wants to join, there will be at least one time for them to practice speaking in English. Let's see if I can do that. I really hope I can. And the final goal is kind of a fun one. It's a silly one. I think it's generally not a good idea to set goals that you have no control over. Uh, but this is growing the podcast YouTube channel to 40,000 subscribers. I don't think that's too crazy. We've got over 20,000 now, so it's kind of doubling the subscribers. But I feel like we, we could maybe do that in one year. It's plausible, it's possible. But again, I don't have any control. I could put in my hardest work into the podcast. I could make episodes every day. But at the end of the day, I cannot control how many people subscribe. So it's not the best goal. It's just going to be a fun goal to have. Let's see if I exceed my expectations or not. Exceed means go above. If you exceed your expectation, you go above what you expected. Uh, if you want to help me reach that goal, by the way, just go to Level Up English Podcast on YouTube, hit subscribe. That will mean a lot to me. I, I put a lot of work into those videos. Let me know what are your work or study goals for next year? What would you like to have achieved by the end of next year? Let's now talk about bucket list goals. This won't take very long because it's quite a simple one, but bucket list is usually related to travel or kind of more physical activities that you can do quite easily. It's less abstract. So a bucket list is really a list of things you want to do before you die. I tend to think of bucket list as goals for the year. I don't tend to make goals for my life because things change so often. But I have a few here. I want to visit Japan. That's very likely to happen because we've already booked the flight. So the flight is booked. So I think it's happening going to Japan. I cannot wait to return to Japan. I also want to travel around China, maybe do some road trip or explore new places in China. That's going to be one of my goals. And a bit more, maybe a little bit less concrete, is I want to make the most of living in Asia. There are so many countries near where I live now that are really far away from England, but are very close to me. So I want to make the most of living here and visit these countries. For example, Australia, uh, South Korea, and all other places here as well. And there's so many ones that are so cheap to get to and I feel like I would be wasting my time if I didn't at least see some of these places. So I'm going to try to think more about that over the next few weeks and make some plans for the year without breaking the bank. <laughs> Good expression there. Break the bank just means spending too much money. I'm not going to break the bank. I'm not going to spend all of my savings in my bank account. Uh, but we'll see what I can do. Let's see. <laughs> Final category is a new one now. This is something that I was thinking about earlier this year. And this is the idea of subtract to add. Subtract means take away. Add means add. <laughs> Bring back. So when it comes to this time of year, we often think about what can I add into my life to make it better. I would often think that way. In the past, I would keep adding more and more and more healthy habits to some extent, that's great, but it gets to a point where you cannot add any more. There are many things I'm interested in, such as breath work practice, uh, yoga, and uh, maybe ice baths, ice showers, cold showers, I'm not sure, things like that that I hear are healthy. And 
I could try them. I, I could consider adding them to my routine, my daily routine. But as, as I said before, we cannot be perfect. In fact, we do not have enough time in the day to do all the healthy habits that exist in the world. At some point, I think we have to think about what can we take away from our lives to make our lives better. So rather than adding new things in our lives and burning out, what can we take away? For example, last year, I took away my private classes. I don't teach private classes anymore. This was one of the hardest decisions I ever made because I loved the private classes and for many years, that was my work. That's all I did and that was how I made money. But it's also how I connected with the students. I connected uh, through the classes and it was it was the main part of my day every day for years. So as the podcast was growing, I made the decision to stop the private classes and I had some very sad uh, emails with some students that you know, I'm not going to continue anymore, but I hope we can keep in touch, that kind of stuff. I still miss all of the students, of course, the, the ones I don't talk to anymore. But I do think in the end it was the right decision because I lost the classes, but I gained so much more. Um, I gained some free time. I gained some peace of mind. And I also gained time to work on the things that I feel are more important in some ways because hopefully they're helping a larger audience. That's one of my big goals. If I'm if I do private classes, I can help 10 or 20 people. If I make the podcast, hopefully I'm helping thousands of people. I hope I am. Let me let, let me know if you agree or not. I hope I'm helping in some way anyway and not just talking to myself. So that's one thing that I did when I eventually fractured my wrist, I also stopped longboarding, skateboarding, of course, and I guess I could have still gone, even with a broken wrist, you can still skateboard, right? You don't really need your wrist. And even now that I'm kind of mostly better again, I am not so, I'm not in a rush to go back. Let's put it that way. And honestly, it's quite nice. I used to go on a Sunday evening that was quite stressful, you know, traveling across the city with my, with my longboard. Now I can just relax. So even though I like longboarding, removing that from my life actually... I feel gave me more uh, happiness and more flexibility. Next year, I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm going to keep this in mind. Maybe consider subtracting something else. Think about something in my work that I'm doing that is not really going well that I can take away and focus my energy elsewhere. So it's, it's all about refocusing your energy. It's not just about stopping things. Uh, you might want to stop something and focus more time on your hobbies or like me, you want to stop one part of your work and maybe that means I can focus more on the podcast so I can slowly do what I enjoy more. Think about what that could be for you, whether that is in your work life or your personal life. So that is the end of my long rambling uh, goals monologue today. <laughs> I am going to put the titles and the summary of all of these up on the blog post again. So once again, that's levelupenglish.school slash podcast 252. I encourage you to head over there, have a think about these uh, headings, these questions, maybe leave a comment. You can leave a comment, tell me some of your plans for the year and how 2023 went for you. I think it would be useful for you to think about it, hopefully, but also I would love to see, I would love to see uh, what you found interesting in this episode today. Okay, I'll end it here. Let's just look at one nice quote, last one of the year from Paul Graham. This is one that I heard recently. I really love it. So I think it's a great one to end on. Don't ignore your dreams. Don't work too much. Say what you think. Cultivate friendships. Be happy. Very simple, but I hope that you received that well and I hope you enjoyed this final episode of the year. So have a great new year. I really hope you do and thank you for watching or listening. I'll see you next year. Bye everyone. You have been listening to the Level Up English podcast. If you would like to leave a question to be answered on a future episode, then please go to levelupenglish.school forward slash 
podcast. That's levelupenglish.school slash podcast. And I'll answer your question on a future episode. Thanks for listening.